In this video, I'm going to walk through some notes on how to conduct an event study. In the following video, we'll actually work through a couple of examples of event studies uh, so you can see how to conduct them. And we'll use an event study with just using just the market return and then also use an event study with a market return and an industry return. So let's go ahead and get started. What is an event study? An event study is a test that attempts to measure the valuation effects of a corporate event such as a merger or earnings announcement by examining the response of the stock price around the announcement of the event. So uh, common ones such as a merger or earnings announcement or dividend initiation which is what we're going to look at in the next video. We can see how companies have responded in the past and in academic work we actually use these to say in general how do stock stock returns react to the announcement of a dividend initiation or the announcement of a dividend increase or the announcement of a merger or acquisition and so we can see overall what we would expect to happen when these announcements occur in the future. The main requirement of an event study is that the stock market is efficient. In other words, what this means is that stock prices react quickly and accurately to new information. Because if they don't, then we don't know that that event actually affected the stock price. There's three forms of what's called the efficient market hypothesis. The weak form of the efficient market hypothesis says that stock prices only reflect historic information. In other words, uh, you can't beat the market by looking at charts and graphs because all of the historic price movements have already been priced into, or expectations based on those have already been priced into the stock. The weak form of the efficient market hypothesis says that stock prices accurately reflect all historic information. The semi-strong form of the efficient market hypothesis says that the returns we see in the marketplace reflect all publicly available information. In other words, whenever an announcement comes out, depending on the level of efficiency, if, if the, the market's highly efficient, then let's say a company announces an, a merger agreement, then very quickly the stock prices will move to reflect that announcement and they'll move it in a way that's accurate. In other words, if the merger announcement is going to increase the value of, of the company, it's, its future free cash flows, maybe reduce the volatility of future cash flows, and we should see an increase in the stock price as a result of that. And that increase should occur very, fairly quickly. Finally, there's a strong form. And the strong form says that all public and private information is, our, is contained in that stock price. In other words, stock returns reflect all public information and all insider information. What this means is that you can't beat the market using insider information because the prices already reflect that insider information. So of the three, academics tend to think and, and, and studies tend to prove or tend to show that the market is generally semi-strong form efficient. That is, stock prices reflect publicly available information, but not privately or insider information. And prices tend to re react uh, quickly to new information, new public information, and generally fairly accurately uh, react to that new information. So we kind of talked a little bit about efficient markets and uh, markets reflecting, stock markets reflecting new information. The reason why this is important is because we're looking to see with an event study if the stock price, for the, the price for the individual firm reacts, how it reacts to the return, the the event that we're we're looking at, and if the market wasn't efficient, then we wouldn't know. I mean, there wouldn't we we don't know we wouldn't know if the response we see is a result of that new information being provided. So event studies are useful for determining how a proposed policy, acquisition, etc., will affect the value of the firm by examining similar events in the past. 
And it's also used for evaluating how a previous event affected the value of the firm. Was it a good idea to do that merger or to issue, to, to increase the dividend or things like that? So the timeline for an event study looks like this. The T's don't reflect days, they just reflect periods of time. So here we have four different intervals. The first interval is from T0 to T1, and that's the estimation period. That'll generally be about a year's worth of time uh, when, when we look at the different, when we look at the event study methodology. T1 to T2 is the event window. So even if, uh, let's say, Apple announces uh, a big dividend increase on one day, we actually look around at the surrounding days because if this is the day of time zero, is the day that Apple announced that event, the, the increase in the dividend, some of that information may have leaked out beforehand. Also, sometimes for some events, the news is kind of fuzzy and people may take a, a few days to determine, well, what, what should be the effect on the value of the firm? So we also look a few days before the event and a few days after the event to get to the total effect on the firm value. Finally, the interval T2 to T3 out here is the post-event window. Uh, post-event windows are often looked at in event studies to see if the stock market or stock price effect around during the event window is reversed over time. So maybe the stock price did jump three or four percent as a result of the news, but then we might see a reversal over time. So the estimation window, that first period, is used to determine the normal behavior of the stock market factors. Most often we would use the market model, and this just incorporates the market return. And it's calculated as the returns for the firm for each day in our estimation period. It's equal to some intercept plus the beta. So this is the, the regression coefficient that describes the relationship between the returns for the firm and the returns for the market. And we use that to determine the normal behavior. The event window, we use the data for this time period in conjunction with the intercept and the beta, or the slope of the stock or stocks, to determine whether the event announcement was anticipated or leaked, and the post-announcement effect, how long it took for the event information to be absorbed by the market. And then finally, the post-event window we use to investigate longer-term company performance following the event. The methodology, I'm including here two different models. One is just the single-factor model with the market return, and the second is the two-factor model using a market return and an industry return. The estimation of the ARs and CARs so the abnormal return, the AR, is the difference between the firm's actual return and the predicted return on a specific date. It's computed using the following equation. For the single factor model, the abnormal return is equal to the individual firm returns minus the intercept that we estimated using the market model plus the beta that we used, that we estimated using the market model multiplied by the return for the market on that date. On day T. The two-factor model, very similar. We take the returns for the firm on day T, we subtract out the intercept plus the beta, in this case we're going to call it beta 1 for the market return, and then beta I2 for the industry return. And then the cumulative abnormal return is the measure of the total abnormal returns during the event period it's calculated as the sum of the abnormal returns during the event period. And it kind of shows us the net effect over a several day period surrounding the event. For significance testing, so we get an abnormal return, but we don't know if it's statistically significant. In other words, did the event actually affect the stock price of the, uh, of the firm? So do the ARs indicate that the event had a real effect on, this, on the price of the firm? This test statistic is the abnormal return divided by the standard error, the predicted y value for each x. So this, this is very easy to calculate in Excel. The denominator is calculated using the STEYX function. 
If the absolute value of the test statistic, again, AR divided by that standard error, is greater than 1.96, then the AR is statistically significant at the 5% level. And so what that means is that if we find that the probability or the p-value is equal to 0.05, so at the 5% level, then there is a 1 in 20 chance that that abnormal return occurred from random chance. As the absolute value of the test statistic increases past 1.96 percent, the probability of that abnormal return occurring just because of chance or randomness falls even lower than 5 percent. And that ends this short description on how we conduct event studies. The next video will actually go through two different events and demonstrate how to conduct an event study in Excel.